very grateful to be here, and I thank Julia for allowing me to come back. She said I could come back if I talked about something different. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't give the same speech, so I said okay. So um, I'm going to talk about why um, I believe myself to be a volunteer, and I'm going to talk about my life a little bit. That was hard for me to make that decision. I had to be really pushed to do this. My guys pushed me. I tried to back out. Um, Julie doesn't know that. <laughs> but I tried to back out. I didn't really want to um, get up here and talk about my life. But I think that if it helps or benefits anyone who's struggling with these kinds of experiences, if you believe yourself to be an abductee or if you have had abduction experiences, um, I'm going to invite you to, to look at it from a different perspective. So, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do a disclaimer first, actually. These are um, my conclusions based on my analysis of my experiences. So, there's no scientific data here. I mean, the Center for UFO Studies did um, study quite thoroughly my missing time episode. But, and concluded that what I had experienced was an alien abduction. But I'm just going to tell you that I have done my own research on this. I mean, I'm the one having the contact. And I'm the one who knows what they're saying to me and what I'm experiencing. At least once I moved past the fear, I recognized that I could get a better grip on what was going on with me than having someone tell me from their um, scientific point of view, what was happening to me. It took me a long time. That didn't happen very fast. It happened over decades, actually. So this is my perspective. You don't have to accept it. I'm not here to convince you that what I'm telling you is real, that I have no interest in that. I'm not trying to win anybody over. I'm just trying to offer up solutions if you're struggling with this. And I'm just offering you a different way of looking at it, maybe. So, I am going to make two assumptions. I'm going to assume that everyone in this room probably is comfortable with the idea that we are not alone in the universe, in the multiverse. In this crowd, the UFO conference, I think that's pretty safe. So I'm going to make that assumption. The next assumption is that I'm going to consider everyone to not think it very weird that I have communication with these beings. That's a little bit more of a stretch, I know. But communication is available to all of us if we can move past our fear. And if we're open to it and accepting and willing to, to have communication, they're ready to communicate with us. That's where disclosure is going to come, it's through that. It's going to sink in through the back door that way in my opinion. So those, those are the assumptions that I'm making. So there are people out there who still have trouble believing that we are not all there is in the universe. As vast as this creation is, there are those who believe that we are it. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. I can remember how to do this. Yeah, I'm using the uh, spectrum of light, but actually our scientists have said that there is a spectrum of life. There's a spectrum of life that exists. And of that spectrum of life, we on this planet, as a third dimensional slash now four dimensional being, are aware of how much of that spectrum of life. With our limited five senses, we are aware of less than 1% of the life that exists. So that means 99% of life that is going on around us, we're not aware of. So right now in this room, we all have our angels and our guides with us. I have my ETs with me, I have my guide, George. If you're psychic at all, you can see George standing back here behind me. After, the, after I speak like this, I always get people coming up freaked out because they saw little ETs running around with me and, and my guy standing back here. So there's life. We're multidimensional beings and there are worlds within worlds. We are energy. 
our world is holographic. And that's the truth of it. So, it's not that hard to understand then that we can have these experiences if we can just access a little higher frequency. You want to go higher, you don't want to go lower. You want to go to a higher frequency. So, the alien abduction phenomenon is a strange, it's a strange subject. And that's one of the first things that I learned after giving that label back in 1989, I guess it was. The Center for UFO Studies regressed me to investigate two hours of missing time. And after quite a while of interviewing a lot of witnesses and talking to people and checking on things, they declared me an alien abductee. And that didn't feel so good. It meant that I was a victim. It meant that I was being taken by beings from another world against my will. And I was having things done to me that I didn't approve of. And it was very difficult to come to grips with that. If any of you have had those experiences, you understand what I'm talking about. You, your mind rejects the whole thing. We're not raised to believe in anything along that line at all. So I struggled a lot with it. In 1987, my community had a flat. I'll just briefly say it to those of you who don't know my story. 1987, we had a UFO flat. It was the hot spot in the world at that time. And it went on for, for a couple weeks. In truth, my visits during that time went on for about close to two years. During that time, the Center for UFO Studies, they found me and they regressed me. Stanley Mitchell did a fabulous job of taking me back and reliving the two hours of missing time I had when I was 17. It was all by design that this happened because it was time for me to wake up to my experiences. And I didn't know it then, but at that time, all I saw was somebody threw a grenade into my life and blew it all to pieces. Everything came undone for me, and my life was never the same after. It took me a long time to come to terms with it. The hardest part of the whole thing for me was the idea of being a victim. It just, it did not resonate with me. I was told over and over again by the investigators I was, I was being abducted and how terrible it was to have that happen to me. And then it was happening to my daughter, which made it even worse to see your child deal with that. And I saw her as a victim. All the energy around it was, it was, it was horrible. And I was angry. I was angry with them, I was angry at life. I was angry at God for allowing this to happen. It took me probably, that was 87, 89 when I was regressed, so it took me probably close to three decades before I made a realization that you can't be a victim. In honesty, we can't be victims. You can't be a perpetrator if there's not a victim. It's the same energy. So that was an eye-opening revelation for me to realize that because it took the sting out of it and it changed the whole perspective of what I was experiencing. Anyone who is being abducted or anyone in life who feels that they're a victim has to claim responsibility for it. Because the truth of it is, is that we are energy. That's our true nature, we are energy. Our bodies, our world, is a, it's a holographic world that we live in. We're just projecting and because we share the same mind and we are one with our creator, we share the same mind and we agree on this experience that we're having. Agreement means that you can't be victimized, no matter what it is. There is something in you that is attracting that to you. You have agreed to it on a soul level to play this role of victim or to be the perpetrator. 
I got that. I finally got that and I finally understood it. 